Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Carl D'Souza. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Power Platform TV. Today we're going to take a look at the Power Apps Solution Checker. So the Solution Checker is a tool from Microsoft and it's very useful. It will go through your code and basically make sure that it's compliant. So an example of where we may use this is let's say you are on the legacy web client and you are upgrading to the new unified client interface and let's say that you have some code in the legacy web client at the moment and you may have some methods in there in your JavaScript for example that are going to be deprecated in the future uh, what you can do is you can run this tool and it will go through and actually analyze your code and then you'll be able to make changes to your code based on its recommendations and then rerun the solution checker to make sure that again your code is compliant so let's take a look at how to use this uh, what we'll do is we will go through and create a new solution and then um, add some code to it and then run the solution checker and see what happens so to do this let's go ahead and firstly you'll be signing into make.powerapps.com um, make sure you select your correct environment in the top right and then go over to solutions and you'll see your solutions here and what we'll do is we will click add new solution and we will go ahead and give this solution a name so I'm just gonna call this uh, test solution checker let's say and select a publisher and give that a version and click create so the solution's been created let's pop into the solution and let's go ahead and add an existing component and what we'll do is we will click on entity and let's add some code against the account entity so I'm gonna go ahead and click account and click next and then I'm just gonna go ahead and let's go and add all components and click add so we have our account entity in the system and if I select it and let's go over to forms and we'll go ahead and change the main account form and what we'll do is we'll add a JavaScript web resource to this form so that uh, when the form loads it's going to set some fields so let's switch over to classic and we will add the code this way and let's click on form properties we'll do this on the on load um, I'm going to go ahead and click add here to create new JavaScript web resource let's click add new and let's give this a name and I'm just going to call this count uh, JS let's say and I'm just going to give this the same name here and for the type we will select JScript and let's click text editor and here let's go ahead and add a function so I'm gonna add a function and I'll call this onload so we'll run this when the onload uh, of the form runs and let's do something real simple we're gonna use uh, XRM page which is going to be deprecated in the future um, we know that it currently works now but we will want to use the uh, execution context to uh, instead of the form uh, XRM page so let's go ahead and add an XRM page and we will uh, do a get attribute and let's go ahead and set a field so let's set a field on the form now I know that there is a, a ticker symbol on the account form so I'm just going to type this in and let's uh, do a set value and we will default this to MSFT for Microsoft so we're setting that um, and that's all we are doing 
So when our form loads, it's going to default the value of the ticker symbol to MSFT using the XRM page get attribute. So let's click OK. And let's go ahead and save this. And let's go and publish it. Awesome, that's done. Let's close this and we'll click add. And now let's wire this up to the event handler. So for the onload, let's click add. Let's select our new library here and we're going to call the onload function. And we'll set that to enabled and we're not going to pass in the execution context at this point. So we'll click OK, click OK. And let's save this and let's go ahead and publish it. And that should be it. So let's just go do a quick test, make sure our code's working. So if we go over to our accounts and let me just click new account. And cool, we see that the uh, ticker symbol defaulting here. Perfect. So let's jump out of this and let's go and see uh, if we can run the solution checker now. So we'll go back to our make.powerapps.com, back into our solutions. And so if we click on the test solution checker, we'll see that we have our JavaScript resource and we also have our account entity. So the way to run the solution checker. So let's click back on solutions. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. We can select the solution. And from the toolbar, there is a solution checker option. And what we can do is we can click run from here, or we can select the solution and select these three dots. And then we have the solution checker option here and we can click run. So let's just go ahead and run this. And before we do that, we can see that the status of our solution check here in this final column in this view is uh, showing as hasn't been run. So let's go and click run. And we see that the status is changed to running. And in the top right as well, we have this solution checker running. So we'll just wait for this to finish. All right, so our solution checker is now complete. And we can see that we get this message, results as off, and then the date and time. Sometimes you'll get the message couldn't be completed. And we're going to talk about that in a second um, as to why you might get that and why you might try to uh, resolve that. So for us, the results are in. Let's go and take a look at the results. So if we click back here and click on Solution Checker, we can see that we have this View Results and we can download the results as well. Um, let's click View Results. And we can see here that this is our JavaScript file that we had some uh, old code in. And we can see that it has actually picked up um, that we are using XRM page and it's actually saying XRM page references or accesses a deprecated API in the client context model, replace this call with the following client context API, and then it's actually telling us execution context um, dot get form context, right? So that's great. It's actually telling us what we need to do to uh, make this page compliant. So if we close this, um, it's also telling us as well uh, use uh, web use strict mode is uh, recommended as well. Strict mode is a way to introduce better error checking into your code. Code should run in strict mode where possible, right? So <clears throat> that's fine. They're both um, a severity of medium and um, it's telling us what we need to do. So let's go and actually resolve this. So in order to resolve this, uh, let's go back into our solution and we will find our web resource and make an update. So let's click in our solution and let's open up the account entity. We need to make some changes there as well as to our JavaScript. Um, so let's go to the forms and we'll pick up the main account form as, again. 
So here is our account form. Let's just go and switch over to classic. And we have our classic form and let's go to the form properties. And so what we did earlier is we created this JavaScript function and we put that onto the onload. So let's go ahead and uh, open this up. So the first thing we want to do is pass the execution context as the first parameter. So let's check that and we'll click OK. And next thing we want to do is let's edit the library and we're going to uh, have execution context as the first parameter. And then now let's uh, go and get the form context. So in order to do this, um, we will do variable form context is equal to execution context dot get form context. Okay. Let's finish that off like that. So now that we have the form context, we can use this in order to set the uh, get the attributes and then set the values. So we'll just replace XRM page here with form context dot get attribute and set value. So now we're using the form context. That looks great. We're passing in the execution context. Let's go ahead and click OK and we will uh, republish our customizations and then we'll run the solution checker again. So I'm clicking save and once that is complete I will click publish. Okay, publishing customizations. Okay, perfect. So now if we go into um, D365, let's just go and create a new account here. We'll click discard changes. This is going to pull down the latest customizations. So we'll just make sure that this is working still. Uh, there we go. The ticker symbol is uh, being defaulted. Perfect. So now um, let's go back over to our uh, make, X, make uh, Power Apps and let's click back. We'll go back to our solution and select our solution here. And let's rerun the solution checker. Let's do it from the toolbar this time. From up here, we'll click Run, and we can see here that we are rerunning the solution checker. So give that a couple of minutes, and then uh, that will be completed. Okay, so the solution check has now been completed, as we can see here. So let's go ahead and take a look at the results. Let's select on the solution checker and view results. And we can see that the message that we had before about using the XRM page has now actually disappeared. So the only message that we're getting now is the use uh, strict mode for um, our scripts here. So um, pretty cool, right? It's, uh, it's gone through, it's run through uh, all the uh, scripts in our solution, um, any other code that we may have in there, and it's running it against its best practices and making sure that uh, what we're putting in the system here is compliant and giving us an easy way to uh, see what is not compliant and go into our code and fix it. So very useful for um, if you want to upgrade, uh, if you're on the legacy web client and you're going to the uh, new unified client interface, um, or if you're already on there even, and, and if you just want to make sure that your code is uh, looking good. So that's how it works. Um, I do want to mention uh, what happens in a scenario where you actually get um, that the solution checker could not be completed. So this happens sometimes. Um, so if we go back over to solutions, um, what actually happens is when you select the solution and you go to the solution checker and you click run, uh, what you find is that the solution checker actually doesn't complete and you get a message over here and it actually says couldn't be completed. Um, so there's a few different reasons that this may happen. One of the reasons that I found is that the uh, solution checker solution itself, which is um, actually this one here, Parapps Checker Base, is either um, not up to date or it needs um, you know a new version, basically, right? So uh, I'm going to show you how to get this up to date uh, to make sure that you're running the proper version here. So in order to do this. Um, let's go over here and we'll go to the Parapps Admin Center and we'll uh, let this log in and 
uh, we are in the Power Platform Admin Center at the moment, and if we click on the Admin Centers here, we see D365. Let's go ahead and select that one. And this opens up this uh, old D365 Admin Center that you're probably familiar with. And what you'll want to do is go over to Applications, and then uh, scroll through at the bottom here, and uh, you will get to um, the Power Apps Checker, okay? So we can see that in my system this is enabled and, and that's been installed. Um, what you may find in your case is that it's not installed and you'll see a button here that actually says install. So if you have a problem when you're running the uh, Checker, um, come in here and just make sure that it's not uh, set to install here. And if that's the case, then go ahead and click on install. It'll just go ahead and reinstall the solution. Um, and then you you should hopefully be able to rerun those uh, the, the checker again and get a actual result coming back. And one final thing is, uh, you know, if we go and click back over to the Paraps uh, solutions, um, you know, once th these solutions can take a while to run. So if you, um, what you can do is you'll actually receive an email once the solution checker is finished running. So if I actually go over here and I go into my Outlook, we can see here that I've got an email and it actually says uh, test solution checker, check complete. So it's telling me that um, the solution checker completed and it actually says here that there was no high uh, messages to report. We had one medium and we had no low uh, severity issues. So, you know, you can you can kick off the solution checker, let it go do its thing. Uh, you'll get the email when it's done and then you can go and come back in here and, um, and fix anything that you need to. And you can also download a, uh, a CSV file. Um, so if we just hop back over here and click on the solution checker again, we can see here that we can download the results and doing that will actually just download a uh, file that you can open up in Excel and then take a look at really the same uh, output. Um, that may be useful if you wanted to, for example, email it to somebody else and say, hey, uh, you know, this is what, this is the results we got. Um, we'll just need someone to go in and make some changes so that we have uh, fixed up any of the issues. So that's it guys, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and of course check out my blog at carldesouza.com. Thank you.